present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Commissioner Helen Kahn. This Zoom meeting is being recorded. Is there anyone here for public comment? Hi, Annie. I mean, Amy, sorry. Hey there. I'd like to formally make a public comment at this meeting instead of interjecting in the middle of your exciting conversation. I know, super exciting. Um, I just wanted to publicly speak and be supportive of the mayor's um, recommendation for a 25% fee reduction for the Section 12 license holder renewals and ask that that be um, the minimum that you consider and ask that perhaps you consider as much as a 50% fee reduction. Um, many of these businesses have had their income just drastically cut. Some have not been able to be open at all. They're heading into a winter where for many of them income is uncertain once outdoor dining goes away. Um, and so I think asking them to pay a fee at this particular moment in time is just an extra burden that I would ask you to um, try and mitigate as best you can. I'd also ask you to consider extending the payment deadline. I think the payment, the fee payment as currently set up is due December 31st, which will be right in the middle of that um, difficult winter season. And I'd like to ask that you consider extending the payment deadline to June 30th, which would still be within the city's fiscal year, but would give them a little more um, runway to make that payment. Um, and I'd also like to say that I am very supportive of the mayor's recommendation to extend the outdoor dining beyond November 1st up until 60 days after the um, expiration of the state of emergency. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Yes, hi Drew. Hi guys, how you doing? Um, so I just wanna just touch base. I know we're uh, talking about the highbrow cordial license today and I just wanted to go follow back on the past couple of uh, meetings that we had um just so in in my my side of this um do you can i just interject yeah. for one second do yeah. you since you are on the agenda wait till Annie, is he on the agenda he is yeah. yes you are so you're item number five okay so do you want to hold off until we yeah. get to your agenda item and talk about it fully okay awesome yeah. thank you thank, thank you, you. Taco. Yep. sure thing um okay so anyone else for public comment <laughs> All right, item number three, application for a new common victualler license for Starbucks Corporation DBA Starbucks Coffee at 303 King Street, Suite E. Do we have anybody present? Nope. Have you heard from anybody, Annie? Yeah, I'm here. I believe he's here. Oh, hi. Hi. How are you? I was on mute. Classic mistake on Zoom. Um, <laughs> you don't have it down by now? For Starbucks, um, planning on opening that store um, in about two weeks um, on the 16th and um, excited to open up and serve some coffee out of the drive-thru. Okay. Annie, we have all of their paperwork? We do. Okay. Can I ask just out of curiosity, I've seen the building. Is it just a part of that building that you're going into? Or yeah, we're at NCAP. I think there's one or two other tenants in there at least. Okay. All right, I was just curious. Our space is uh, just over 2,000 square feet, so it's the typical size of a Starbucks. Right. I'm sorry, can you say your name for the record again? Sure, my name's Daniel Brennan. Okay, thank you. And are you the store manager, Daniel? No, I just handle their permits and licenses. Um, okay. The store manager is a gentleman named William Bell. Okay. Helen, do you have other questions? Uh, no, I don't. I think our paperwork is in order. Yeah. Annie, we're all set then? Yep. All right. Then I'll make a motion to approve the application for a new common victualler license for Starbucks Corporation DBA Starbucks Coffee at 303 King Street, Suite E. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. Thanks very much. Item number four, application for a new common victualler license for Masa Mexicano, LLC, DBA, Masa Mexicano at 176 Pine Street, Florence. Hello. Hi there, can you state your name for the record? As my name is Roberto Saravia. Thank you for coming, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So can you tell us a little bit about what you're opening? So I'm trying to open a Mexican restaurant over at 176 Pine Street, right next to the Great Wall. Mm -hmm. They've been here for 
ever right here. So I'm guessing you know where the Great Wall is. Um, so uh, we're trying to create more of an authentic Mexican restaurant, uh, trying to make our tortillas from scratch. Um, we're actually dealing with um, a company out of uh, LA that's called Macienda. They deal, they deal with a lot of uh, corn from uh, local farmers in Mexico, which is non-GMO or organic. Um, and we had a little hiccups here and there. I, was, I wanted to open in September, but one of my contractors didn't work out. So it's... <laughs> That hurts. It so what's your what's your opening plan? Uh, November first. Nice. And Annie, do we have everything in order, paperwork wise? Yes. Okay. Helen, what questions do you have? Um, I don't think I have any. I'm looking forward to it opening now. <laughs> Will you have Tate? How is it going to be the setup? Will it be? Uh, here, um, I don't know if you can see it right now, but I'm only going to do takeout to start, you know, yep. nothing, nothing major, but, um, this is coming out. Nice. Yeah, I've been, it's, it's been unoccupied for the past, like, couple of years. Yeah. Um, and I live around the corner. I've been watching the activity there for the last few months. I'm just putting this out there, too. I'm guessing you know Coco's in East Hampton? Umi is helping me out with the menu developing and recipes and decor and stuff like that too. She's that's known great. I was seven years old, so. <laughs> oh, that's great. So we're, we're close with her. Nice, that's very exciting. We're looking forward to having you in the neighborhood. Thank you. Um, Helen, do you wanna make a motion? Or sure. I'll make a motion to approve the common victory license for uh, Masa Maxi Mexicano, LLC, DBA Masa Mexicano at 176 Pine Street in Florence. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you so much. Hopefully. Thank you, Robert. Robert. Good, Good luck. luck. We'll see you soon. Hopefully soon. Yes, definitely. Okay, item number five, discussion and possible vote regarding status of Cordial's permit for Highbrow Incorporated. Um, Drew, before you start, just to bring us back to where we last left off at the last meeting, Brian was going to do additional research and I don't know if he did that or not, Annie. Um, but Helen, I know that you have mm -hmm. as well. You spoke with, uh, is it, sorry, Rich? Ralph. Ralph Sacramony. Yeah, <clears throat> at the ABCC. Okay. Yeah. Um, Drew, what would you like to say? Um, so I would just, you know, I've, I've done a little bit of research as well since the last couple of times we talked and I was just, you know, since the beginning, you guys told me these products, the V1 and the Bar Hill are questionable. Um, and I, I followed up and I got a lab report and a letter from Paul, uh, Paul from V1. Um, and I was going by the 2.5 sugar and the law, um, and again, the purveyors wouldn't sell it to me if it didn't have 2.5% sugar. Um, also, just to note that our state's capital, Boston, and I would assume that we would be as progressive, if not more progressive than the city of Boston, they're allowing and they're being pro-business and allowing the people, the cordials to do the same as I do, as long as it's following that law with the 2.5% sugar. Um, kind of following up with what Amy said about the restaurant business as a whole, we are affected. We're doing like 50 to 60% of our normal sales. We're going into the winter. Um, we're constantly blocks being put up. I mean, the, the board of health um, is limiting us to six people per table beside uh, like the state says 10 and we're doing six in Northampton. So I'm losing 10 tops to Amherst and East Hampton. So there's just a bunch of stuff that we we're trying to hurdle through uh, moving into the winter and for me, I just, I don't know what uh, the urgency to yank it from me. Um, I am currently working on getting a full liquor license as we speak. I'm in negotiations with three restaurants that are going out of business or have gone out of business in Northampton. Um, and then if there could be some sort of leniency just to get me through, just through our, our slow period and in the spring, if you guys want to just yank it from me, I mean, but I'm just, you know, it's just, we're in a really tough situation in the business right now. So I was hoping for a little bit of leniency from you guys. Thank you. Um, uh, sorry, can I just point out that uh, Brian texted 
He said that he did speak to the ADCC. Um, Ralph explained it. He said he's good with supporting Natasha and Helen's view regarding the court delay. So, I mean, that's the, the conflict, Andrew, that has been going on for throughout this whole conversation is that the information we're getting from the ABCC as a directive and what another city is doing. And, um, you know, we've taken months now to talk about this. So I think if we were being urgent about it, we would have done it already. But we've tried to be really fair and conscientious and incredibly thorough in researching it. Um, Helen, do you have some comments based on the information that you have? Um, yeah, I mean, after speaking with Ralph Sacramoni, I mean, to me, it is cut and dry. Um, and I know we've been going back and forth on this issue, but he explicitly said, and then I had him do, you know, write an email just so we'd have it in writing, because I had stated before, you know, it's sort of not fair to us that we have nothing in writing, but mm -hmm. essentially that it, uh, that you need to show it's a cordial or liquor by having a label that identifies it as such or having paperwork from the TPB classifying the product as a cordial and because cordials are taxed differently than other spirits. So it, it does seem straightforward. I, I feel that we need to just not pay attention to what they're doing in Boston to, yeah. to me. Um, the issue with this is that you're setting a precedent, you know, and I, I think you've done a great job of, of going forward researching this, getting the cordials license, you know, sort of more power to you. It's been an education for all of us. My concern is that if we just, if we now know this information, it seems to me very straightforward and we let it go, then we're setting this precedent that that's essentially what we're going to do, which is almost tantamount to saying anyone who gets a cordials license, it's very close to a full liquor license. And, and so for me, it's not an unfairness to you. It's sort of a it's a fairness to all of the businesses, the ones who have paid full price for a liquor license and the others. And frankly, just so that there's, that it's very clear going forward. I mean, both for the restaurateur's sake and frankly, for the distributor's sake, I am thinking that there needs to be a discussion with them because I don't know if our local distributors know exactly what the rules are and the laws are. Um, in in uh, determining what a cordial is, and I think it would be helpful to them as well. So I guess what I'm thinking is don't see it as that we're pulling something for you, but see it as you were fortunate to have all these extra months, <laughs> essentially, while we were figuring it out, being able to serve those drinks that technically and legally do not um, fit into the cordials category. That makes sense. Okay. Attorney Seawell is here too, just in case anybody has any questions. Okay. I believe. Okay. So do we have... Um... I am here, by the way. Hi, Alan. Hello. Um, Annie, would, would Brian's text message go on the record or be included in the minutes if he's not present? Yeah, I mean, I'll include that I read a text message from him. I mean, it can't be part of the vote, but um, his view will be reflected in the minutes. Okay. And Helen, do you feel like we're ready for a vote? Um, yes. I mean, I guess I need to know how we are wording this motion. Yeah. So we have an idea. Is it in the form of a motion, Annie? Um, yeah. Yeah, you'll need to to vote on on how you want to proceed or how Andrew should proceed. So yeah, so my general thought about the specific wording at this point is this idea that he it's yet another cease and desist from serving those uh spirits that are not strictly categorized as cordials or liquors, meaning that they don't, the one, they need to have a label that defines them as such, or there needs to be some kind of paperwork from the TPB defining them as such. Otherwise, they can't be on the menu. So, and I don't know if we give them time or if it means tonight it needs to be taken off the menu. Yeah. And yeah, believe, I mean, believe me, 
Andrew, my heart goes out to you because I absolutely understand the situation the restaurants are in. And I will say for my part, I'm just trying to do the right thing for the long term, trying to figure out this issue with the courts. Um, Annie, what do you think of the timing? Is that totally just up to me and Helen? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, since you're going to vote that it's not legal, then it probably should be immediate, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Helen, you worded that so perfectly. It did. Oh, did I? Do you yeah. want to repeat that as the motion for the vote? Yeah, duh. you don't happen to have written that down. You need to do. <laughs> I um, sort of did. Make a motion to cease for um, high bow to cease and desist serving any spirits that are not strictly classified as cordials or liqueurs uh, based on having that identifier on the label or having paperwork from the TTB that identifies them as cordial or liquors and um, effective immediately. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, did you add a time frame to that? I said effective immediately. Okay, great. I mean, Thank you. Or, you know, or it needs to be rectified within 24 hours. I mean, I because I don't know how quickly you can, I mean, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's taken off the menu for tonight is what we're saying. Right. Yeah. Just to clarify. Okay. Shall we move on then, or is there anything else with that, Annie? Uh, I work good with that. Okay. Thanks, Alan. Thank you, Alan. Drew, sorry, this is the outcome of it. Okay. Do you need anything from me on the extension of permits? Um, permits. Oh, I mean, I think we can handle it. Um, okay. I think we can. I think we can handle it. All right. Well, I'm around. If you just shoot me a text if you need me okay, to. Okay. Thanks. On. Thanks, Alan. Appreciate bye it. Bye all. Okay, bye. Bye, Alan. Thank you. Item number six: Discussion and vote on Mayor Narkowitz's recommendation of a 25% fee reduction for Section 12 license holders for the 2021 license renewal season. Um, I have one question relating to um, Amy's comment during public comment. Do we, the way this recommendation is worded, do we have the authority to increase the fee reduction to 50%? Um, I, do we need Alan back? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, part of me says no, because the mayor is the one with the authority that, to set fees. Yep. So I don't think so. Would we be able to accept his recommendation and make further recommendation so that at least we get so far as the 25% reduction? Probably. Um, the, can I just say the thought for the 25%? So if we were to reduce it by say 50 or 75% to offset that cost, that comes out of taxpayer money and the mayor didn't feel comfortable with going any higher than 25% because the 25%, it's about a $32,000 loss of revenue. And right now there's an economic development fund from uh, there was five seasonal all alcohol restaurant licenses that were part of a special act. And when they were to, um, to be converted to annual all alcohol, they had to pay a $10,000 conversion fee into which that money had to go into a fund for economic development purposes. And right now there's $30,000 in that fund from three licenses that have converted. So that's where the money will be used, taken from to offset these costs. Yeah. Okay. So that, that was kind of the, the thought process. The reason. It. And do we have the authority to extend the due date? So uh, we've also talked about that, um, talked about it with Alan, uh, Attorney Seawald, and let me actually find his email here. So June 30th was, that was kind of, too late because that's like the last day in the fiscal year 
Um, and then um, so Alan said that payments should be made in advance of issuance of these licenses. Um, so licenses can't be can't be issued without payment being received, which is kind of the reasoning for for not extending the renewal fee deadline. Right. So then, which means the very latest it could be is the end of December, right? I mean, you, I mean. Well, I mean, it's because you issue them. Do you issue them starting in? Does it cover December through or does it cover January through? So the, the license renewals must be signed um, in the month of November. Um, technically, they don't need the licenses until January 1st. So technically, the, there's no payment due date by then. However, I mean, in the past, the, the, the payment has been due at the time of the paperwork's been due. Right. So the latest we could, ex the, the farthest we could push it would be December 31st with licenses issued on January 1st. I mean, yeah, I don't know how I'll get a license overnighted to somebody by January 1st, but. Right. So, I mean, really, realistically, it could be extended maybe 15 days and then there's that, is that helping anyone? Um, uh, and not to muddy the waters, but I have a couple of questions. One is why are common VIC licenses not included that is in that? Is it just because it's a low enough fee that there is not a thought that it would? Yeah, um, I guess there was just, if we touch common VICs, we touch, we have to touch everything else. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking what's been impacted. I mean, I guess all of those under 10 years being older. Yeah, so I mean, this doesn't apply to package store holders because they've been open the whole time. And um, kind of the spirit behind it was 25% is about a quarter of the year that these businesses were closed. Granted, it's, well. <laughs> I know, I know it seems really like heartless for me to say that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And so the thought is if we reduce it even more that that money does have to come from somewhere? Or is it's got to come from somewhere because it's already built into the budget. So it comes from taxpayers. I mean. Oh, yeah. See, it's, it's one of those catch 22s because not that necessarily this fee is going to make someone decide to not stay open, but it's like, well, if all these restaurants go out of business, then also where's your money, you know? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I guess that's a bridge we cross if it comes to that. I don't know, though, if the difference between 25 and 50 is going to keep someone in business um, or not. I mean, I should say it's it's easy for me to say yes. We absolutely should extend this. I think we're both leaning that. Or sorry, totally. yeah, uh, allow for the twenty five percent reduction. So absolutely. Yeah. I don't know if we go ahead and make that motion to approve this recommendation, and then I don't. Or do we? And then talk about other potential considerations, or I don't know if our hands are tied here. It sounds like our hands are tied, and it would go back. You know, we could make the motion to accept to approve the 25% or accept the 25% uh, reduction and encourage the mayor to, you know, consider other means of an additional 25%. Yeah. I don't think it, I mean, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't sound like it's something that would happen, but obviously we want it to. Yeah. All right, so should I just go ahead and make a motion to approve the recommendation the Northampton License Commission from Mayor Narkowitz for the 25% fee reduction applying to the liquor licenses as detailed in his memo? I don't know exactly how to say that. 
I have a quick question. Annie, are these dollar are these amounts with the 25% reduction or these are the full amounts? Wait, sorry, can I just get a second and then you can have discussion yes. before you both vote on it? Yes, I second the motion. Okay, now discussion. <laughs> All in favor, aye. <laughs> you have to do that, but okay. Are these dollar amounts with the 25% reduction or these are the amounts of their license renewal fees? Those are with the with the They're after the reduction. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, I mean, I expect that he's looked at it as closely as he can. I guess it doesn't hurt for us to, I don't know what we do. Yeah, I mean, I ha we had a lengthy meeting with him and the finance director. Um, there's really not, I mean, there's, they're pulling literally money trying to pull money out of their out of thin air for everything yeah and it was uh, it, yeah yes this is where you'd hope there was state or federal funding to help cover this but you know how that is yeah okay so Okay, so moving on. Yes, let it be known that we wanted to do more, but we really can't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Item number seven, discussion and possible vote to impose an annual renewal fee for holders of a cordials liquors permit. So this um, is it's like terrible timing to be imposing a fee on somebody. Yeah. Right. This has been a conversation from months ago, and it just ha so happened to land on this agenda. I mean, I think my inclination is to just punt this until we get through this mess yeah, I agree. of a year, you yeah. know, before we're at it, imposing more fees. Uh -huh. um, but the, the spreadsheet you did send with the other other communities was helpful if we were in a healthy economy right now, I would be inclined to recommend that the cordial license be equal to the wine and malt fees. Uh, sorry, so in addition? No, equal to. So then there would be no additional fee? What is the, what is our wine and malt right now? Wine and malt is 15.50. Yep. So, which I mean, not that we have to do what other cities are doing, but that would be right. close to what Franklin has in Salem, and they have very different, you know, one is, is charging an extra 900, one is an extra 750, so, um, yeah, but I agree with you, Natasha, I think this is a subject for next year. <laughs> Not the time. <laughs> you know, that we don't want to add additional fees at this time, yep. but I think it is something worth considering. Um, uh, and also, I mean, trying to figure out what, what the actual basis is. I mean, I, right. you know, I don't know how the fees, frankly, are assessed initially. Is it having to do with what question. sort of expected income in it is on these drinks? I don't really know how they're set initially. I mean, I, I would feel bad just pulling it out of a hat saying like, oh, but if we had some indication, I don't know, that with the cordials license, you're expected to make, you know, this percentage more. In yep. drink revenue, I don't know if that's where the basis is or not. So. <clears throat> so can we just put it on like a year from now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Next, I'll track with it. Agenda. June of next year. Yeah, Thank you. <laughs> um, item number eight: discussion and possible vote to extend the November first, twenty twenty deadline for outdoor dining expansion operations for any period up to and until sixty days after the end of the state of emergency in accordance with Governor Baker's COVID-19 order number 35. Okay, so this one's a little, um, it's, it's like three tiered maybe. Mm -hmm. So the city has authority to have tables and chairs in the public way until November 15th. Um, I don't know why, but I believe Alan Seawab made the deadline November 1st on all the licenses. Mm -hmm. So I guess 
part one of this agenda item is um, I would request that you extend the deadline for all of these license holders until November 15th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that's part one. Um, the second part would be to discuss and vote um, on whether, okay, before, before I say that, there are some license holders that can, that we can extend deadlines to um, for any period up to and until 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. And those are people on private property and um, like sidewalks. And, but then those that are in the public way, like streets, like uh, the, any, any restaurant that has, gone in the street from the street modifications like like lower main pearl street masonic street market street those those are coming down november 15th so those establishments cannot be cannot have an extension of premise after november 15th um because that's that's what the city has authority to from the city council. That's always been the date that the mayor has said will it will end on the 15th and um, the city has to get ready for snow removal operations. Um, so there's the people in the public way that, that can't have an extension, but then there's people that are on sidewalks or on private property that you will either have to decide if you want to just blanket extend those people, <laughs> excuse me, or if you'll want individual restaurants to apply to extend and then come back on the come back on the agenda for you to. It seems a blanket extension makes the most sense. Yeah. Yeah. So one will need a blanket extension for everyone that has extension of premises in accordance with phase two, November 15th. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. And then number two would be to extend the premises up uh, for any period up to, or how, whatever the wording is on the agenda, 60 days. And those are the people that are on private property or in, or on sidewalks. Does that make yeah. sense? I know that yeah. that was a lot. Yep. No, it makes sense. And then, but the ones who cannot extend past November 15th, we can't do anything about that because uh, they're no, in the public they're way, they're in the street, they're... Yep. The, everything's coming up on that Monday. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Helen, do you have any questions uh, or comments? No. No. Okay. I'm ready to approve these things. Yeah, so I will make a motion then to extend the outdoor dining expan expansion operations up until 1115 for everybody who's currently outside as well in, as in, a, in accordance with phase two. In accordance with phase two. I second. Is that the, sorry, is that the end of it? You want two motions or one? Yeah, uh, two, please. Okay. okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and the second motion, make a motion to approve a blanket extension for all of the establishments currently outside that are not in the public way. Does that make sense? Well, isn't the sidewalk considered the public way? Yeah. It is. Um, so currently outside on private property or sidewalks. Okay. So make a motion to approve a blanket extension for establishments that are currently outside in a public way on the sidewalk or in a private area <laughs> or in a private area <laughs> and then do you have to say the rest of this uh in accordance with governor baker's COVID 19 order number 35. <laughs> uh but you, you sorry you need to uh determine a time period 
Oh, I'm sorry. I'm screwing this up. Um, for, can you read the, did you type that out? Um, your motion? Yeah. Uh, to extend a blanket extension for all establishments currently outside on private property and or sidewalks or in a private area for, for 60 days. Uh, for, do we have to say, oh, for, for any period is fill in the blank for us? It's for a period <laughs> up to 60 days. For any period up to and until 60 days after the end of the state of emergency. So, yes. so do you want to do the 60 days? Yeah. Yeah. So, or in a private way, um, up to 60 days. Do you want to finish it? After the end. And just read After it. the end of the state of emergency in accordance with Governor Baker's COVID-19 order number 35. Great. Great. <laughs> Has the 60 days passed yet? <laughs> Do I have a second, Helen? Yeah, oh, second, absolutely. <laughs> All in favor, aye. aye. So that was painful. Yeah, so out of curiosity, what happens if it does snow and they need to clear the sidewalks and I mean I guess it's sort of up to the restaurants about when they close shop and just bring things in. Yeah I mean I know certain tents have to be taken down if there's snowfall because it could collapse. Right. Um, this morning. Yeah. But I mean in the past there's never been a deadline <clears throat> excuse me a deadline for when people have to come inside it's really just mm -hmm. at the restaurant's discretion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Item number nine, approval of minutes. Um, it looks like we can only approve the July 22nd. And August, I think. Right. I read, I was there for two of them. I just wasn't there for the last one. I, th I think Brian was there for August though. Yeah, but you guys are a quorum. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes for July 22nd, 2020 and August 5th, 2020. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll do September next time. Any new business? Um, no. No new business. I don't have anything. All right. Then I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Annie, so much. All right. Take care, everyone. See ya. See you next week, next month. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.